So once you have created your article, so you might want to update it. So let's create that feature to update an article that we can do it with two methods. The first HTTP method is put and the next one is patch. So let's decide an endpoint for the put operation. So that would be the same as the post operation slash article. And for updating an article, we need the ID or the primary key of that. In this case, this will be an article ID. So we'll be passing that to the path variable or path variable as well. So we have the two things, the HTTP method and the URI. The last thing that we need is the request and the response. For put operation, we would need the same request body that we want to update. In this request body, we'll be accepting these parameters as an input. And the response would be a string that says that this article has been updated. Once we're done with the put HTTP method, we'll look at patch and we'll try to understand which best suits our description and which should be used in this case. Also, we'll see the differences. So this is very similar to this method called get article. So let's change the method name to update article. And let's change the mapping from get mapping to put mapping. We'll also be receiving a request body. So let's add that. The request body would be the same as the one that we received in post mapping. So we are done with the controller method. So let's create the service layer. So in the service layer, I've pasted the same method. So let's modify this. So we need two things in the input. One is the new article object that we want an existing one to update with and the ID of that article object. So what we can do is we can simply call the save method and that would act as an updation. So this article entity that will get in the request will not contain the ID of that article. So one thing we could do is we can simply do article dot set ID and set this to the ID that we're getting in the path param. So let's say we want to update an article three. So we'll get three as an ID and whatever things that we want to update it with. Finally, we'll add that particular ID and we'll hit the save method. So let's keep this as void. And finally, we'll return a string. So let's return this statement called article has been updated and let's call our service layer. So in this method, we'll be passing two things. One is the ID that we're getting from the path param or the path variable and the object that we want to update it with. So let's test this out. Suppose this is the article that we want to update. Let's create a request for that. So we'll have a put request. So the URI would be the same. We want to update this article with ID2 and we'll pass our request body. Let's say this is the request body that I want to send. So typically we do not want to send a timestamp since we were creating a timestamp from the Java code. So let's remove that. Also, we do not need this ID since in the post request, we did not need an ID. So let's hit this request. So you can see it gives us 200 OK response and it says the article has been updated. So let me hit the get request. You can see this is article ID too. This post has been updated and also this has been updated. So there are a couple of things that I've missed out here. So one is the timestamp code. I haven't added it here. Let's quickly add that. So I've just copied this code from that. So what would happen is every time we'll hit this put endpoint, it will update the article with the latest timestamp. So now if we hit this put endpoint again, and let's hit the get endpoint, we'll see the updated timestamp. So one thing you should notice that let's say there is no article with ID three and we want to update an article with ID three. So this would create an article with ID three, which is what we want in a put request. So we make a put request. If you want to create a resource that is not already existing, so let's create an article with ID three. So that's it. You're done. So let me get this article and we're getting it. Now, the main reason I want to use put in this particular case is because typically in these kind of scenarios, at least for my business logic, I want to update only the description most of the time. So this code has one problem. The problem is that let's say you don't have an article with that particular ID. So let's say there is no article with ID as four. So it will create an article with that particular ID, but it should not happen because we have added a constraint in our SQL that the ID should be auto generated and that depends on the sequence that it is in. We can fix that by actually hitting the database with that particular ID and checking if that article exists or not. So I do a find by ID and if that 
article is present then only we'll set this id so that is that article this is present so let's call it as article and then we'll set this entity or input with that particular id if something is not present then we won't be updating the id of our input article entity and otherwise if it's not present then it will not go inside this code and will not have any id inside this and a new id would be created based on the sequence of the sql so one thing to note here that this id can be anything so this can be whatever we are getting it from the input request or whatever it is finding so let's say we can do like that also so this article is what is existing currently with that particular id so i hope that makes sense so let's say i give it as 10 so instead of now creating the article with id as 10 it will create article with the next sequence so let's hit that and let's test with the get request so as you can see it's generating an article with id as 5 so that is a more better approach than the previous one so let's say in instead of three variables you have 100 variables in the post request and after that if you want to update a resource you don't want to specify all those 100 variables you just want to specify one or two variables in your request body so what you can do is in that particular case you can use a patch request unlike put request a patch request wouldn't expect you to put the whole request body just like you do in a post request so it will update only those particular fields which are present in your request body so let's say if i remove added by as well as title so it would make more sense to update only the description in my case instead of updating the whole article because once an article has been made by a particular person he would not update his name again and again also he might not update the title or the image of that so he might want to update let's say the description of that so in this case it's perfect to add a description in the request body and apply that patch operation so let's say if we do that in our existing put request what would happen and what would go wrong so let's say i try to update an article with id3 with something like so it will update that and let's get this article so what happening is it is giving title as well as added by as null and that is what we don't want we want existing fields to be as it is and only those fields to be updated which we add in the request body so this is why we use patch operation so if you want to update the whole resource we use the put request or if you want to create a new resource that is not existing we use put again we use patch if you want to update only some part of that resource so the http method would be patch request uri would be the same slash article slash the article id and now it would accept a request body but the request body could be anything so it doesn't need to be everything so now we'll expect a map in the request body so the map would be of type string as key and an object as value so what spring would do is we'll send a patch request and in the request body we'll send a json and spring would automatically convert that json into a hash map so the hash map will contain description as the key since it's a string and whatever object we have in the value would become the value of that finally we don't want to return anything we just want to return a string that your article has been updated so let's write this patch request so instead of put mapping i'll write patch mapping request uri is perfect the path variable is good but we want in the request body a map of key as string since in the json key is basically a string and object as value since value can be anything so that's it we're done we do not need to modify the name of our method since we can leverage the functionality of method overloading so let's create the service layer so let's add another method which would accept map as well as an id so one of the easiest way with which we can write patch operation is by using reflections api so let's see how we can do that so first of all we should understand that what the string is the string is basically nothing but the name of our input variable so let's say we want to update our description so i'll be sending this in the json payload then this would be the key or string and this will be the object or the value of the hash map so the string or the key would be the name of this variable so what i would do is first of all i will get the existing value of that article so i'll use the same find by id to get me that article entity since this returns an optional let me add a get so now this will return an article entity 
that is existing article and now i want to update only those fields inside this article entity that are present in this request so i'll use a for each loop from java 8 for a map if you're not very well versed with java 8 you can check out my java 8 crash course in the for each it expects a by consumer which is a key value in our case so this is the key and this is the value and this lambda expression would expect a void so that's it so in our loop let's write down a business logic so we'll use reflection utils and we have a method called find field that would expect a class name as well as the name so this string name is the name of that attribute or the member variables of our class and this would return a field so let's write down the class name and the field name is the key so this will return a field object. So now let's use the set field method to set the value V inside our existing article entity. So this set value expects the first argument is the field that we want to update. Second argument is the object that we want to update. And the third argument is with what value that we want to update. So the first one is we want to update this field of this article. And we want to update it with this value. So that's it we're done so now in this loop it will update all those fields that it finds and it will update whether it's respective value after it's done updating all the fields that are required we'll save this article entity so the one thing we missed here is so this flag that you want to turn it on so this is set accessible since currently the field that we are getting is private so you want to make it as true so if you want to add more attributes in our article so this is one of the best way with which you can implement a patch operation so we have the same problem that we had before that find by id if it doesn't get anything this get would return an exception and we'll get 500 as a response so let's quickly add or else throw if it doesn't find any id it will throw this exception since patch would not create any resource and we don't want that so let's summarize what we're doing here we'll find an entity based on whatever we have given as an input request that particular id that will modify with existing key value pair and then we'll see that if it doesn't find any id we'll throw this exception which will give a 404 message before we test it out let me tell you this is not the only way with which we can implement the patch operation so the other way we could do that is in the controller itself we'll expect the request body as the article entity that we did in the put mapping so the first step would be to find an existing resource which we are doing here also that are present inside our request body and will update it to our existing so the only problem with that method is that if we add more properties here we we'll need to update that code so let me know in the comment below that if you want me to make a video for that particular case also i can make that so let's modify this first article and we will only modify this title so here i'll be adding a patch request this would be the uri and in the request body, I'll be adding only the title or whatever I want to update. So let's do that. So yeah, it's updated. So let's check that. So it's updated. So one thing you might have noticed that now we're not getting that weird null properties everywhere since only this property has been updated from that existing resource.